From a diamond in the rough to a chart-topping pop rock icon, Jewel is living proof of the power of an indomitable spirit to overcome tragedy. Jewel Kilcher was only eight years old when her mother, Lenedra Carroll, divorced her father, Attila Atz Kilcher, leaving him to raise the children on his own. But the young daughter could not take being apart from her mom, as she explained in her memoir. Never broken, songs are only half the story, she wrote. My heart ached for her so, and in years to come, I made desperate attempts to see her. Even if she had to take a huge risk and hitchhike to get there as a kid, Jewel did whatever she could to reach her mom, only to find that she couldn't care less. Instead of spending time with her daughter, Carol tricked Jewel into staring at a light bulb for hours and making her believe she had the power to alter it, just to keep the child preoccupied. She was too young at the time to understand what was happening, but the situation became much clearer as an adult when her father confessed the reason why Carol abandoned the family all those years ago. Jewel explained, She had told him that she needed a break from being a mom and that she wanted to explore her life without us. So when Jewel made several trips to see her, the sad truth was that Carol, for the most part, didn't want her there. Ads Kilcher certainly stepped up to the responsibility of raising Jewel and her brothers when they were children, but he struggled greatly to do so, in large part because his own upbringing was quite terrible. Jewel told People, As much as we have a genetic inheritance, we have an emotional inheritance. My dad was also raised in a wildly abusive home. I had a way better go of it than he did when he was young, but it still wasn't good. But a troubled childhood was far from the only problem. Jewel added, My dad had really bad PTSD from serving in the Vietnam War. But those words weren't really known at the time. He tried to drink to handle the anxiety and he became abusive. And so when my mom left and he was just left trying to figure out how to handle it, he reverted to the emotional English that he knew, which was becoming an alcoholic and becoming abusive. Eventually, the situation became so rough that she left home at 15 years old to live in her own place. It was not until her father was much older, in his 60s, that he finally sobered up and the two were able to reconcile. Throughout her career, Jewel has had to deal with all sorts of sexism, or outright vile behavior from men, which began long before she became famous. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, the singer revealed a shocking aspect of her early life and said, I've had men hitting on me, sadly, since I was really young. At eight, I had men putting dimes in my hands saying, Call me, it'd be so great to f when you're older and just horrible stuff. As she got older, the situation only increased in intensity. As Jewel explained in her memoir, in order to survive where she grew up in rural Alaska, the team was forced to adapt. For the worst cases, this included the need to, in her words, shut down advances in a way that kept the man's ego and temper intact. Initially, Jewel struggled with her classwork as a kid, and it would take years for her to figure out why. I had a really difficult time learning to read when I was young. I was undiagnosed with dyslexia. Yet, while the revelation of her condition made things a little bit better, her academic life became almost unbearable after making the mistake of living with her aunt in Hawaii. At the public school there, Jewel was not only threatened with physical violence, but she also endured all sorts of verbal discrimination from her fellow students. She recalled, I nearly got jumped every day and learned to keep my head down and be as invisible as possible. When Jewel went out into the world to make a living on her own, she could not seem to catch a break and found herself employed by some of the scummiest men. While working in the service industry, one of her bosses tried to get her to pose for a calendar photo shoot, as she explained in her memoir. She didn't want to and told him to keep dreaming. But then the situation deteriorated even further when Jewel saw him pressuring another woman to do the same thing. She intervened and was fired right there. Luckily, Jewel managed to get another job right away. But when her next boss asked her out and she turned him down, she ran into another major problem. The artist tried to be as polite as possible, but apparently that was not enough. When she went to pick up her check, he continued to be disrespectful and wouldn't give it to her. The singer was devastated because she desperately needed the cash to pay rent and knew the lack of it meant she would likely face eviction. She wrote, I felt hopeless and doomed. My only value seemed to be in men's perverted interest in sex. I felt hollow, worthless, and incapable. I ended up homeless because I wouldn't have sex with a boss and I didn't want to be leveraged and so I started living in my car then that's how I became homeless. Unable to afford rent after she was fired from her job, Jewel was forced to live out of her car. In an interview with Substream magazine, the singer explained, Getting food, water and shelter was exhausting. The amount of anxiety I had left me so sick and fatigued, I was always moving. Without a physical address to provide to potential employers, 
Jewel also learned the hard way how extremely difficult it was to get out of her predicament. But that was not even the worst of it. She told Today, For me, the hardest thing was being treated as if I was subhuman, as if I didn't matter. People looked at me like I was absolutely disgusting. I wanted to yell at them and say, I'm human. I may not have a house, but I matter. Shortly after, she hit absolute rock bottom as her vehicle was stolen, leaving her without shelter of any kind. During one of the darkest periods of her life while living out of her car, Jewel faced her greatest challenge yet that could have very possibly killed her without the means to afford the necessary medical care she needed, let alone any type of insurance. The young artist became gravely ill. She didn't know what she had, and without the resources to get treatment, her condition worsened to a dangerous degree. It was just this vicious cycle of trying to get a job, but I got sick too much to keep the job. Once it became apparent that her condition was not improving, Jewel went to the emergency room but was still rejected. However, she finally received a vital bit of hope at what appeared to be the last possible moment. When talking with Today, the singer recalled, Thankfully, a doctor had seen me get turned away. I was dying of lead poisoning, and he gave me some antibiotics and saved my life. Especially when Jewel was young and her career was taking off in the 1990s, music industry DJs and journalists said some extremely inappropriate things to her on several occasions. In an interview with Stereo Gum, the artist recalled one time live on air in South Carolina when the interviewer introduced her by saying, Hey, you may have heard me describe my next guest as a large-breasted woman from Alaska. Jewel, how are you? These days it may seem unthinkable that someone would treat another human being that way, let alone get away with it on air. Jewel always fought back with her own insults, and she was sometimes kicked out of the radio stations where the interviews took place because of it. But radio hosts were far from the only problem. One of the most well-known instances was when she was interviewed by Kurt Loder on MTV. In the 1990s, it was a big deal for musicians to get the opportunity to appear on the network. But unfortunately for the singer, her interviewer ruined that special moment. Not only was Loder rude, but he went on to bluntly insult her intelligence by pointing out how she misused the word casualty in a poem. There are people selling thoughtlessness with such casualty. Mm -hmm. Casualty doesn't mean that. Does it? I mean, casually is like a guy gets his arm blown off. When talking with Stereo Gum years later, Jewel described the conversation and said, He was setting me up, and then he dropped the hammer or something as if to expose me that I wasn't educated or something. I am uneducated, straight up, an uneducated kid that was homeless. You smartass for pointing that out. Just... Next topic. Sometimes it is very difficult for someone to see what a close family member truly is, and this was sadly the case for Jewel regarding her mother, Lynedra Carroll. The brutal wake-up call occurred well into adulthood when the artist was horrified to discover that Carol embezzled over $100 million from her, which was all her wealth. 34 years old, realize I'm $3 million in debt, realize my mom stole it. From that point forward, the musician has seen her mother in an entirely new light and was forced to go back and rethink many of their previous interactions. This more than anything is what led Jewel to the depressing realization that her mother had abandoned her as a child even though Carol blamed it all on her father the entire time. In 2003, just weeks before Jewel was about to embark on her latest tour, she received horrible news that caused her to cancel the entire thing before it could begin. The singer's friend and touring bassist Tarome T-Bone Hannon had been a part of her team since 2000. Before that, he had performed with other huge stars like Shania Twain and Amy Grant. Yet his respectable career came to a tragic end when he unexpectedly died from a brain aneurysm. Jewel was rocked by the heartbreaking event and released a press statement that said, T-Bone was a phenomenal player and we all loved him. We are all just in shock and hurt. Jewel met professional rodeo rider Ty Murray in 1999, but it wasn't until a year later that she went to see him perform in California and the two began to date afterward. Even though their careers made the situation difficult, especially with the amount of traveling the singer did for tours, they were determined to make it work. How does a guy go about finding a girl who will come out here and live in the middle of nowhere and help you work the ranch? She'd just look at me. In her memoir, Jewel said, I was tired and I was in love, and I wanted to give my relationship with Ty a chance. The couple was able to figure it out and tied the knot in 2008, followed by the birth of their son, Case, a few years later. But during their six years of marriage, cracks gradually formed in their bond that eventually reached a breaking point and their subsequent divorce. Jewel explained, We worked hard on our relationship, but it became evident to me that while we loved each other dearly, we were hurting our love, not building it. And we did not want that to be what our son grew up to see.